Hey guys, Thomas the Silly Jr. here, aka Mustache Tom. I'm here to review the Happy Time Murders. And I would have reviewed this yesterday, but I uh, had some internet issues this yesterday uh, as I got back through work. And re reviewing movies in general has only gotten harder with less time to dedicate to movie reviews, getting an additional day of work, and having less. I only have two days off of not doing my official job, uh, which isn't YouTube, by the way, uh, obviously, because, you know, YouTube doesn't consider me a good enough YouTuber, so I don't get paid from them, and I don't have a, I don't know, I don't have any Patreon, so I can't say that YouTube still is my job. Nonetheless, the only other thing I have to say before I officially begin is I did see some other reviews of this, which is something I normally don't do, uh, but I decided to check it out anyways. Uh, that kind of... Yeah, and I did see the commercials, it did seem like it was trying to overdo on, you know, a certain thing, so I kind of already had a vibe even beforehand, even so, even during the trailers, that this wasn't probably going to be a good movie. Nonetheless, I guess if you do want to watch it, spoilers, I guess? I don't know. Uh, so we follow our main puppet character named Phil. Uh, who sees, uh, goes around narrating the beginning as he sees this other puppet get roughed up and then he defends him. And he says that the way, the old ways of puppet, being a puppet, which includes singing and dancing, is the past and how things have drastically changed. So he goes up to his secretary in, in this building. Her name is Bubbles. I, th I think that's where her name was. Uh, and Phil talks about his history about how he used to beat down on crime. So he gets uh, a case from a Mrs. White, which is another puppet. And there are some issues with this character, but I'll get to that in quite a bit. So anyways, he takes on the case and goes to a location called Puppet Pleasure Land, where... If you've seen any other reviewer talk about it, or seen the trailer, I don't know if actually if it was in the trailers, I don't think it was, uh, but, the, uh, but there is an octopus milking a cow in a sexual way, like, it's just milking, but the cow is getting pleasure out of it, so, uh... You know, I thought they were going to make a bigger deal about it. I thought it was going to last a lot longer, because that's what every other reviewer seemed to imply, that it lasted long. But, uh, Phil actually cuts it out, pr you know, like, a short while after it occurs. And it doesn't really affect anything. You could have cut that part out of the movie, and you would have lost nothing except to show that, like, absurd sex scene, quote-unquote. Um, you know, I think it was there to be, like, ridiculous, like, kind of, like, reminds me of the reaction of, like, something like Boku no Pico, for example. If you know what that is, then, yeah. Anyways, uh, he talks to this bunny, uh, puppet for a bit, who's also the sexual deviant, I suppose. And, uh, he kind of briefly mentions, uh, I kept reading her name as Connie, but I think her name was Edwards, Edwards Connie, I think that's her full name, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'll just call her Connie, because it's the first name I think I heard in the movie. And their whole shtick is to mock each other, uh, him for being a puppet and her for being, I guess, I think it was for being fat. I didn't, like, I didn't write each joke down, obviously. That would have made the thing way too long. Uh, my notes way too long. Nonetheless, uh, we cut to a show about puppets, uh, that used to be, like, in the old school days of when, you know, they did the whole, uh, singing and dancing shtick. 
And uh, Phil starts to talk to his brother Larry, who also kind of makes this movie a little bit in bizarre in a weird way. I mean, this they whole there there's this whole big thing about you know puppet discrimination. I'll just call it that, I guess. Um, but Larry seems to be fine off. Like he his popularity carried through with him. So I guess he was the only exception to the rule. I don't know. If there are others, again, it's not really clear. Um, but anyways, um, Kanye wants to uh, talk to him after after that little bit. Uh, because when he uh, goes about doing his business, she's always going to be there. So, um... You know, they they cut to this, uh, the brother talking about, um, how Phil used to be this fun-loving cop who actually got in. Um, and the reason that Connie even came in is because murders happened, uh, in the porn shop. Anyways, the dogs are brought in and they tear the brother apart. So, uh, after, uh, the cops come back in and Connie cut comes back in saying her usual remarks of uh, Phil tries to tackle her and this lieutenant wants them to work together on this case and they put together rather quickly that th the people who are being assaulted are specifically from the show literally called the happy time gang so they talk with their with their contractor and the contractors all I guess against puppets, which is weird. Um, and Phil knocks him out to get some additional info. So they check this area out that has a vast array of puppets and they all have guns. And Connie proceeds to take some what I'll just call puppet crack, I guess. And she starts to play cards with this wolf. Meanwhile, uh, Phil does his own thing while Connie starts fighting off the puppets after they call her a bitch. A few times, though. Anyways, Phil talks to this purple puppet about what happened to his brother and see if he can get some additional intel. But someone drives up and blows the other puppets away that are in the immediate vicinity with the exception of Phil. So now it looks like Phil is the one responsible all of a sudden. And the show or the movie tries to imply or try to earlier imply that since there was only one human on the show that she would be a potential like suspect. Uh, so he goes back to uh, Phil that being goes back to Bubbles and talks to her. And talks to Mrs. White. And she gets all sexual on him, literally. And we see the trailer. They had sex in the police uh, interrogation room. And Phil proceeds again, like, I want to say, like, again, like, Poco no Chico, uh, having a super long orgasm. Uh, and it feel again, it feels like a sex scene that is just there for the sake of a sex scene. In fact, later on, this scene actually does more harm than it did to be like, haha, they're having sex, ooh. Um, but I'll, again, I'll get to that in a bit. So yes, that happens, and, uh, Phil afterwards jumps out the window and the, uh, rest of the cops are trying to get in on him. So Connie checks on the beach looking for one of the other puppets from the show. Meanwhile, uh, she, oh, well, she makes her way towards a boar, I should say instead, a boar puppet, and gets some info. Well, Phil goes to the strip joint to talk to that human I just mentioned from the show. And meanwhile, Connor goes in deep to find one of the puppets named Gopher. 
And something about a wife comes up very briefly. And it doesn't actually seem to go anywhere. This whole wife angle, I don't think it actually panned out to anything. Unless I missed something, but I, I highly doubt that. Anyway, uh, so Phil and the stripper talk some more about when they were together, and then she kisses him, and then uh, when she gets in the car, it blows up. So Phil runs off uh, to Connie's messy, messy's ha uh, her house, which is a mess. There we go. Um... And we get a flashback when he is there about him semi-odd years ago uh, trying to save Connie uh, when she's being held at gunpoint. And he has his gun up and he ends up shooting this father instead in the distance. And yeah, again, that causes even further issues, but I'm going to save all those issues for the end. So Phil wakes up from this back... The uh, backflash. Thus, uh, Connie takes this call uh, and goes to see what the remains of Gopher is, and he ended up being washed out while uh, Phil remained in a cooler. So they go to see the two remaining uh, guests on the show, or participants on the show uh, who are known as the Kissing Cousins and when we get there we find out that they had kids uh, and the kids are monstrosities or considered monstrosities even by puppet standards I suppose <laughs> I don't know anyways Phil apologizes for his mistakes and Connor in the meantime, shoots off her own radio. So they go in towards the, the house, and Phil goes in through the front, and they hear some screaming, and again, they meet the kids, who are, as I mentioned, deformed, I guess, by, again, by puppet standards as well. Uh, anyways, the parents are found with their heads torn off, and the killer is there and gets away. When Phil tries to go out to get her, the killer, uh, he is then surrounded by the cops. So they start to get, they start interrogating him, and we see that uh, Mrs. White now is ratting out Phil all of a sudden, and Connor talks to the other police while that's going on. So they get their little fight out sequence, uh, and Connor walks out after getting fired, because of course that has to happen, uh, the people getting fired and still doing their little mission, uh, a very cliche in this sort of scenario. Uh, but Bubbles and, uh, Connor team up to go to a hotel where they find a secret room and they find out that they reveal, I guess this is where I'll put the spoiler alert if you don't want to know who did it, even though I think some of the things I said earlier might imply who did it, obviously, but in case you didn't put it together, it was indeed the daughter of the father that was killed. Uh, and she was the one who did it. Now. This is where a few questions come in. One, how much time actually passed? Because in the flashback, the girl is a girl, and the person who, he t who you know, is there currently is a woman. So a great deal of time must have passed. And two, I guess puppet's age? Question mark. More so over, why would Mrs. White, the murderer, want to even have sex with Phil? Why did that even come up? Again, it doesn't make any sense. If she wanted to kill him, then why earlier on did she want to have sex with him? It just doesn't add up. These are things that I don't think they thought through, because I think they were thinking, we gotta have a sex scene, because sex, and uh, yeah, these there's that character, and she 
you know, ugh. yeah, not really thought through. Uh, and you could have taken both sex scenes out, and again, you would have lost nothing in the movie. Just putting that out there. So anyways, uh, we find that the poof is now burned when because they are in the room and Bubbles like touched something that made it blow up. And Connor shoots Phil in order to them to get out of the station, takes them to the hospital. They call Bubbles and Phil tries to get in on him. Uh, uh, in on, uh, on himself, trying to solve the case by himself, sorry. And, for whatever reason, the murderer, uh, Miss White, has these henchmen all of a sudden. How did she obtain henchmen? Is she rich? Did she... They just sort of work for her for some mysterious reason. And her reasoning for killing is switches from, you know, I wanted revenge to I just wanted to kill people. Which I do think kind of actually takes away from the movie even more. I don't think they needed to change it. They could have just left it being revenge. And I think that would have been fine if, any, if anything else in this movie made any goddamn sense. And she even has the, the accomplice of Jenny, which, again, I don't... Oh, Jenny's uh, one of the humans, and she ends up dying anyway. Anyways, the goons of this murderer uh, almost throw Phil into the a plane engine, which Connor fights them off to save him. And uh, the murderer... Miss White gets the drop off on her, and she uh, grips on to Connor, and Phil now has to relive the moment of her being caught in the crosshairs again, but manages to shoot the killer this time. So, Phil asks Bubbles out, and he gets back into the force, and the movie ends, and everyone has also also already talked about the after credit sequence where they show the people who are the puppeteers and all that good stuff. And that was the Happy Time Murders. I think that this movie didn't know what it wanted to be. I don't think it wanted to be a murder case because the, the bits and pieces that go into a murder case kind of fall all over the place. I don't know if they wanted to just have it to there to be the sex scenes, there's only the two of them. And again, you could have taken those out of the movie and lost nothing. I don't know if this was trying to be a comedy, because most of the stuff is just, the like, again, it fits right into the sex stuff, which I, I don't know if that's funny to a lot of people, but... Uh. Uh, again, I think it fails in everything it's trying to do. I think it was trying to take on too, too many different angles and uh, not really hitting any of them because they didn't think things through. Uh, so I'm going to give a ha the Happy Time Murderers a 2 out of 10. Uh, not really a good score and I'll only give it a 2 because the puppetry was okay. I, I'll give them that much. Uh, other than that, this movie is, again, a complete fall-away movie. It just is a complete mess from start to finish. And if you enjoyed this review of the Happy Time Murders, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out that link in the description. I'll head you over to my Patreon page, and any donations are greatly appreciated. And until next time, everyone, bye-bye.